This is going to be a very interesting one because we're kind of jumping into an area I don't know a bunch about. We have talked about, like, Kiki's delivery service on this channel, but I don't really consider, like, Hayao Miyazaki, like, the generational anime that people love, you know? It's its own kind of category of, like, a quiet piece, and I think it can be separated from, like, the things that have become, like, very popular overseas, like these monumental stories that people show their kids and rewatch all the time. Ghost in the Shell, which is the movie we're talking about today for Galactic Tales, kind of fits into that modern category. Like, it is a 90s anime that has its fans, but doesn't have, like, the huge cultural relevance that other more, like, episodic adventures do. I say that as somebody who has no idea what he's talking about. Maybe the fact that I'm saying Ghost in the Shell and Kiki's Delivery Service are two different categories of anime is the wrong thing to say. I don't know. Maybe they're the right thing. I don't know. All I know is I wanted to try something new. <laughs> I had seen parts of this movie before. I've always known Ghost in the Shell existed, and I was just kind of like, I get it. It makes sense. Like It's, it's right in that era of 90s anime where I don't feel I need to go back to watch it. But anyway, I saw it on the other day, and I'm like, okay, I guess I'll check it out, and it's good. I am not a connoisseur of this style of animation or this genre. I have no actual identity in this category. The closest I have is I really like Sailor Moon. That's like my biggest thing of this type of piece, but Ghost in the Shell has a lot of things I do like. It is very much an inspiration or inspired by the techno world of Blade Runner. Now, maybe the manga came out before Blade Runner. I don't know. But exactly just sitting down to watch this, I'm like, okay, this is one of those futures that we always come back to and play with. And I have no doubt that the generation that is making movies now or TV shows now is inspired by this movie a lot. Weird dystopian world, techno organic city with a bunch of different things going on. Cute people fighting people with big guns. Every single creator you are a fan of has probably been inspired by this property. It is a very easy thing to sell to people, and I don't have any problem with that whatsoever. What it is delivering is just that aesthetic that I've come to be accustomed to, and when I see it here, knowing what it is, I'm not blown away. I'm just simply impressed with what I'm seeing. The, the sweeping epic scale of the thing looks really good. There's some really cool slow motion effects in this movie. The actual aesthetic is not uncommon to me, but I do like what I am seeing. It, it makes me smile like, yeah, okay, we're doing something kind of interesting here. We got a special look going on. We are in, what is it, Newport City, some big megalopolis in the middle of nowhere, and we just have a couple of sections of like these people who kind of get infused of technology or these intelligences that go into their brain and they start to work as this organization and kind of take down illegal threats. It's kind of like taking down the illegal internet stuff. And I think that's kind of cool. There's something in there to explore. I think there is. And this movie does it better than other interpretations I have seen. I can't say I'm the biggest fan of this, but I will say yes. This is doing everything I'm fine with. There was not a single piece of this movie where I'm like, okay, this is unnecessary. There is a really cool aesthetic, as I said. The characters are all very distinctive, like they have room to grow while staying into the tropes that we've seen for them. We do have, like, we're following Section 9, which is, like, one of the elite organizations. They have a couple of these new recruits, older recruits that are working to take down, like, the illegal, like, crime, whatever, of the internet and technology and that kind of stuff. It's kind of fascinating to see that. And kind of, like, the further down the line you go in that organization, you see people that are, like, fully integrated into, like, these robotic anamorphic bodies, which is kind of cool. And then you have, like, regular people who are just kind of doing that. The further down the line you go, the more integrated your body is to the technology. So you see people who are just basic scientists, like, their hands can sprout into fingers upon fingers upon fingers or their body is just entirely made of this robotic material. And that leads us to kind of our core character, Motoko, or Major as her codename. She is our central point character, and we follow her on this journey as she is working for Section 9, taking down some people who are illegally working on some stuff. What I really like about this movie... What I really like about this movie, it, it does this thing that I think more stories like this should do. 
the scale isn't that big. Now, it of course, is just like the first chapter in an ongoing narrative if you read the manga. But for just one movie, it's like, okay, we'll deal with like the beginning threat that we'll do at the beginning so you can see off this character and the power. The optical cloaking technology that is used by both her and her opponents will fight some crime people that way. And then, boom, we'll lead into the bigger story, which has a lot of like metatextual narrative that is kind of a lot to take in. Casually watching this, I was just... Okay, so we have this, like, kind of, it's not an artificial intelligence, it's called the Puppet Master, but it kind of might be an artificial intelligence that was not actually based on, like, the shell of a person who previously existed, that's what the ghost is, like, the remembrance of a thing that you're using the body or copy of. This is an intelligence that is created individually from that that wants to find the next step in human evolution, which watching it in today's climate, having like the, the way we look at the world through AI today, this made it kind of more poignant in a different way where this is a being longing for the next step of evolution. And that is kind of like to find its own identity, find its own life, find its own reason to live and to die, which is kind of a very interesting thing to see. And it's kind of like maybe this destructive thing within the corporation that was actively seeking to destroy it maybe they helped build it one of these sections of that did and how does that play into major and what she's up to there's something in there i like it is kind of just okay we are doing some stuff that's hard to understand if you're not truly focused on it and it doesn't like just it doesn't give you a minute to like okay here's what we're talking about it doesn't explain what a ghost truly is that idea in your head that flickering longing and it doesn't really need to. It, it just has, like, you understand what this is. It's a techno-organic world. We can hook our brains up into computers and look at stuff on, like, a weird grid. And I love, I just really love the, the weird aesthetic portion that is, here is, like, the future we'd envision from 90s technology. Just slowly enhancing a computer screen. It sounds like an old dial-up internet thing. It is so slow and cool. And just that aesthetic is awesome. It has moments where it's very Tron on the grid, which is like following people on a street. I love all of that. It looks fantastic. And the characters all have distinctive looks I do like. Major has... You know, standard anime girl looks where she's stronger, she's buffer. There's scenes towards the end where they really hone in on her muscles, and I'm like, that is intense. I don't understand how that would work physiologically, though, because you are made of, like, machine parts, so how are your muscles actually forming? And, of course, we do have a sexy lady. There's a couple sexy lady appearances in here, and it is a 90s anime, so be wary of that if you are somebody who is easily offended by robot nudity look it doesn't look realistic it just looks like a bare body sometimes get over it it's a very important character moment that she can use her optical illusion and, and disappear it's important and it works well and the effect they do for that is kind of cool where it starts off as like a like a magnifying glass like mirroring the thing that she is on top of and pulling away every time a character does that it looks really cool and that also leads us to Batu, who's like the other lead character. He's like another one of the enhanced individuals working for Section 9. He's got like some weird eye stuff, and he's kind of like the yin to her yang, you know, cool guy. I do like that he's kind of like, yeah, you know, the world is what it is. I don't know how to stop it. I'm going to win this. It's just going to happen. I can dig that. Cool guy. I like his vibe. Then you have like the regular guy, Takosa who's just like, what if Miami Vice, but in the future, you know? I, d I dig him. He's like a regular human, and it's kind of cool. And it just culminates into, like, we have to figure out, okay, what does this Puppet Master actually want? Why is it coming to Section 9? Why did it try to send itself here for this thing? And the end result is pretty much just it wants to integrate with Major to find their next step because they are solely like these two beings lost in this idea major has kind of been longing for this idea of like her past life what does it mean to be alive dealing with those things while still doing the job and, and not complaining about the job but she's just looking at it like this is a hard task to accomplish what am i truly doing here maybe there is something else to accomplish here and when they start to integrate they actually succeed at that I'm like oh that's kind of cool there is something there's like a duality to that i don't want to get in too many like of the, like the trans allegories of that because I don't know how to like fully talk about that story but when you have the male voice coming from the female body and it's integrating with the more feminine side that is major and it combines into one new being there is something to talk about in there I just might not be the person to do it 
it's kind of fascinating that way. I do like seeing that. There is a really cool fight scene with a tank where it's just major you're going to town against this thing. A bunch of like big old blasting guns and stuff. And that looks really cool. It did surprise me in a lot of cool ways. I do think there are some interesting ideas being explored here. It does feel very wholehearted and it has a message it's trying to say. There is some intensity involved. The world and the aesthetic are really cool and very vibrant. I do like seeing that. Sometimes it's just not my cup of tea and that happens. There are certain moments where I'm like, oh, okay, we're spending a lot of time in like this chase sequence. It's not really going anywhere. It's not really doing much. And maybe there's too many, like, board members from other places to set up another movie. And yes, this is an ongoing narrative. There are, like, other movies that aren't truly, like, a sequel, but they're derived from other material in the world. So it's kind of like a continuation. I get that. But if you are somebody like me who has no real connection to anime outside of, like, what you know about it, this is the type of thing where I'm like, this pretty much sums it up. There's a clear message in there. It does show the themes and the art style very perfectly. It has this techno-organic feel of the future, which is a very prominent thing in science fiction today, and has vibes that are really cool. It has vibes that are really cool. The characters work. The story works. There's an element of finding your truest self in there that's very important, especially in a world built on artificial intelligence and losing the human connection that you are severed from. There's a lot of cool stuff in there. It all connects into one interesting bow. It's going to be hard for a lot of people, but I, I think there's some stuff that's worth it in there. For this being like the first anime I'm really talking about on here, I don't know if you can get better. But hey, maybe I'm completely off base because I have no connection to any of this. I could be wrong, but I think I'm right. So thank you guys for listening to this rambling of Ghost in the Shell. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.